Welcome to episode seven of the Mazda MX-5. Oh yeah, and it's gonna be electric. So on this episode, we are gonna get the battery box built. As we've now the test fit in the car, we're gonna go through everything with one long tech time of what goes into that battery box and explain every little bit in there, including the BMS. We're gonna pull the dashboard out and we're gonna put a PTC heater inside the heater box to give us our cabin heating. And we're gonna look at getting the gear selector sorted for the vehicle. If we have time, we might get the motor and gearbox mounted, but if not, we'll put it in episode eight, where I'm really hoping we're gonna get the wheels spinning. So if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and let's go. We're gonna talk heating. So we've spent probably an hour roughly getting the dashboard out of the car after watching some YouTube videos. There's a lot of hidden bolts and connectors. So as you can see right now, we've actually managed to get that dashboard out. It was a bit fiddly. Um, probably should have done a bit of extra work and taken steering wheels off and all that stuff, but was a little bit lazy, shall we say. Um, but we've managed to do that myself and Josh. And yes, that's a new Josh. We now have two. Um, so you're going to get really confused as we go along with this. Um, so now it's all out. We have a heater matrix. So this is the heater matrix from the MX-5 um, with all its relevant flaps and other bits. So we're going to basically, we've basically removed the original heater matrix from this, the liquid heater matrix. And we're going to be fitting a high voltage heater matrix, which comes in the form of a PTC heater, which is just here. Um, now this one is rated from roughly 300 volts to 560 volts for three kilowatts. Obviously we're going to be running 100 volts roughly with the MX-5, so it's not going to put out three kilowatts, but it will still work. So we probably get 1.5 kilowatts out of it, which is not a huge amount of heat, but it's a very small vehicle. Um, the basic, the way this works out is high voltage going in. Um, it's not funny, not, not bothered which way, whether it goes positive, negative, what way that goes round. And it also has a thermal cutoff, so temperature cutoff here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire a small 50 amp contactor, probably in the tunnel in a little box with a 12 volt supply from a switch, which I'm gonna put somewhere in line with when you hit red on the dial to activate this. Um, but this thermal cutoff will run through that. So if ever this gets too hot, this will basically put a break in the system, open the contactor, what will allow the PTC heater to come online. Now, we've made some small modifications to the box. Basically, we've opened it up a small amount. I've put a little aluminium bracket on here for this to slot in, and there's two fixing holes on there, as you can see, which are gonna fix through here. Uh, I'm now gonna chuck some foam tape around this slot it in, fix it in place, and then that is good to go. It means we can start getting this back into the car and we can have a quick look at the gear selector setup we've gone with on the MX-5. Now with how tight of a fit that is, Probably doesn't even need the fixing holes. Now that's in, screws are in, foam tape's on, all sealed up and ready to go back in the car. So I'm gonna chuck that over to young Josh, let him get that fitted, get a dashboard back in. But we're gonna leave the gauges out because Speed Hut are sponsoring us a set of custom gauges that they've designed, all CAN bus controlled, purposely for our electric MX-5. And they will also be bringing them out for the entire MX-5 range very soon. But that's gonna be on the next episode. Um, I'm now gonna have a look at the gear selector we're gonna be fitting to the car. So looking at the center console the MX-5, we've decided to keep the gear selector in the same place. It's a natural location your hand always goes to select, drive, neutral, reverse, or first, second, third, fourth, and maybe six and some MX-5s. Um, so a decision's been taken that we were gonna fit one of our new um, drive, neutral, reverse, reverse, neutral, drive gear selectors. It's a really nice um, gear selector. It lights up blue, and then there's a red LED that follows the selection you're in, so you always know what gear you're in basically 12 volt um, positive negative, and then 
you have um, a pin that goes live for drive and a pin that goes live for reverse. So pretty simple, straightforward. Um, originally we were gonna mount it horizontally, but it didn't look that great. So we've taken a decision to do a CAD design and 3D print a, um, basically a lump here to tilt it backwards, um, which here is the finished article. So that basically bolts in under there and this slots into it and it just put, should put it in a really nice neat location for you to select gear. So let's quickly get this mounted in and then we'll do a close up on this so you can see how it looks. Now there's still a tiny little bit of play on the front of here. Um, but my plan is to leather coat this so it'll look like part of the car that'll also soak up a little bit of play they've got in there. Um, but all in all it's a really nice fit in, it's quite a nice natural position as well. Um, and it should become a really nice aesthetic part of the car. Now this is done, I'm going to go and get the battery pack built with other Josh. <laughs> Two Josh on this episode, I know it's confusing. Um, and we're going to get battery pack built. It's going to basically be one long tech time because there's so much information that goes into the battery pack with buzz bars, BMS wiring, coolant plates, contactors, etc. Yeah, there's an awful lot to go through. So let's get started on the battery pack. Right, we've got everything let out here, ready to start doing the battery box build with myself and Josh. Um, we're just going to talk through all the bits we've sort of got here and what the process of putting it together. So I'm going to let Josh quickly talk through the batteries and coolant plates. If you'd like to go ahead with that. Yep, um, as you see, the big bit is the, uh, the battery box. Um, you can see it's all CNC cut and folded um, steel made by Cage Laser. We've also got a nice polished stainless trim panel on top just to jazz it up a little bit. Make it look pretty. Make it look pretty. Um, we've got the three cooling plates we're gonna be using. So two of the three will have four bricks on it and the third one is only gonna have two on it. Um, so these are the, the bricks we'll be using which are the LG modules that, um, that we, we use and supply. So they're going to be bolted to this with a big box of fixings. Uh, also, we've got our own designed cut and bent um, and dipped in-house bus bars that we'll be using. Um, so they'll be able to drop straight on and we'll be able to... And we've just used a Plasti Dip on these, haven't we? Yeah, um, for this one we have. Uh, sometimes we do powder coat, but Plasti Dip was just easily available. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's cheap and cheerful bit messy but they come out really well yeah it's probably quite glary on the camera yeah um, and what's we've got you've got a we've got our interface panel that's going to hold our orion 36 uh two two fuses uh no sorry one two. fuse two contactors uh, and a smaller contactor we've also got our zero v contact controller that's going to be that we'll uh, locate in here as well and then the contact controller basically when you give it ignition live will close the negative contactor, it will do the pre-charge for a second, and then it will do the positive contactor, it's all automated, which makes life really easy. Um, only other things we've got on here are some amphenol connectors that we're gonna be doing for the motor controller and for the charger DC to DC plate that Josh made that's in the back of the car. Um, so now, I suppose the process for you is pressure so, testing? Yeah, so we'll get these up on the pressure test jig, we'll, we'll run through that quickly. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll give everything a good acetone wipe down and then we'll get to making the, uh, making the modules. Cool, well, let's get them. First things first, we're gonna pressure test these cooling plates. Um, so we've made a little setup here that we can basically um, pressurize these. We pressurize these up to about 1.5 bar. Um, what we do is we'll pressurize it and then hold it for a good half an hour. Uh, if we've got any leaks, we'll uh, then pull apart the fittings and inspect and see what the issue is. Um, if not, we're all good from there. We'll get that will get signed off, and then we'll pop that in the jig, and we'll start making the module. There we go. So we'll leave that for about half an hour. And we'll come back and uh, see if she's still holding air. Before we put any of these modules onto the cooling plate, we're going to have to do a few little tests. Um, so first, we're going to do a voltage test of all of these. Um, so just check what voltage we got, and then what we'll do is we'll log that into our build manual, uh, build records. And then after we've done that, we're going to go ahead and do an insulation test um, between. The terminals and the the body to make sure there's no hv to ground so this is the insulation test part of the uh, process so we'll go ahead turn our machine on clip it onto the the body of the bod the module onto the terminal press the test then it runs through its cycle um, what the outcome is um, so we'll have a, a pass fail criteria it all depends on what the the manufacturer specifications are of the module um, so we have got a, a pass-fail criteria on these.
Now Josh has got all the modules bolted to the coolant plates. He's dropped them all onto this wooden template for now. Um, normally we'd use a proper battery build jig like behind us, but as we're only building one, we decided not to go on and build one of those. Um, I've mounted the contactors pre-charged, pre-charged really onto here. And I've got to wire that in and wire the contactor controller. But first of all, we're gonna look at the Orion BMS. Once I've got this done and can start doing those wiring, I can start making the loom up and Josh can carry on with the rest of the build. So I split the Orion up into cell groups. So there's a 36, split them up into 12s. So each one of these is a group of 12, each color code. Um, we're gonna start with the most negative and then module one. Luckily, each of these packs as such with four modules on makes up a 12. So we've got 12, 12 and six, which is really good for the Orion BMS. So I'm gonna start with number one, two, three and four. Uh, I'm gonna go minus one, which is the black wire into module one, and then I'm gonna put one to three into that, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So fairly straightforward. And then the next one does the same on the next module set, and the yellow one does the same on the two. But on the two, once you get to number six, seven to 12 of that group also go on to that number six. So the Orion knows that that's where it's ended. So I am now gonna measure all these up, get them all cut to length, go and pin it all and start building the loom up. And then we'll move on after Josh has got this mounted in to do the IO loom going into the Orion BMS. Well, that didn't take too long. Josh has gone on and got all this mounted on here now. Um, and we've got our positive negative contactor and our pre-charge system in place. And our contactor controller is gonna sit down in there. We've also made up our HV cables to link through to our main high voltage output. I have spent quite a few hours making up the Orion loom, uh, which is the nylon braided um, and all made to a length. I've also terminated with the relevant connectors for the LG modules. So I'm now gonna fit this on and do a validation check with the Orion tester, which is this one here. Um, which will basically tell me if I've messed up and got everything wrong. Um, so I'm basically going to crocodile clip with some links to just make up each module set uh, live, but only as that module set, so it'll be quite low voltage. Plug the tester in and just make sure that everything is good. Once that's done, Josh is going to finish making up the coolant pipes, as you can see, uh, and we're going to get this fully built and actually into the battery box. So the first one I'm going to do is the orange set. So now it's all linked together. Let's retest this again now with the tester and we should get, I really hope everything should say it's good. And we've got good on all accounts, which is really good. And it shows that all of our connections are there and present. On the last cell group, I should have some Zs, which I do. Um, because obviously we're, this is a, a 36 S, but we're only using 30. So it means number 30 to 36 actually tied together to be the same. So when I run through my voltages, I should get my natural volt increase. But when I get to number 30 to 36, they should all become the same in which they do. They all become 114 volts all the way through on there. And then I can now leave this for a period of time to do a full wire check.
as you've seen, that was a fairly lengthy process. Um, the pressure tests went absolutely fine. Uh, so it all checked out. So this pack is now free, validated, and the coolant system is perfect. We have all the HV in apart from two buzz bars, which we're leaving out until we seal the pack up because it keeps the pack at low voltage, so it's safe. Um, all the HV outputs are over here. They're all in. We've made up two HV wires for the missing connector, which we should hopefully have next week so then that can get finished. And we have an IO loom made up, which is going to link into the Orion and to the contactor controller and then go into the car so we can do relays, fuses, etc., to bring all that online and to monitor the CAN bus system. Um, overall, the packs come out really, really well. The guys have done a really good job. It's a very nice design by Josh and Tom. Um, and I can't wait to get it in the car and actually start testing it. Now let's take a quick look at the other stuff we've been getting on with the MX-5 uh, that we haven't put on camera, just to keep you all up to date with what we've had going on. Now if we take a quick look at the MX-5, we've got the throttle in. That's all done now. We've used the original throttle cable and gone on to one of our Zero EV throttle pots and our cable version, we do do a lever version as well. Cable version worked out really, really well for the MX-5 as you can see. We found an ideal position just there. We have been looking at the vacuum system for the brakes. We've made up some brackets. They've gone off powder coat. Next episode, we'll get that into place so you guys can all see how the vacuum assist system continues to work on an EV. Um, the gear selector is sorted. I've leather coated it. I did a three mil piece of foam underneath, some stretchy fake leather uh, on top. And it's also taken a little bit of soak up, with a little bit of play we had in the gear selector as well. So that's worked out perfectly. As you can see, the dashboard's in, but we've left the dials out because we do have our really nice new speed hut gauges coming, which I'm quite excited for you guys to see because they've come out really, really well. Um, but they'll be getting put in on the next episode. If you haven't done already, give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. Please come back for episode eight because I'm really hoping we can get the wheels spinning. And then maybe we'll get it in someone else's hands for a test drive that everyone may know. But as I said, Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.